Okay, as promised, uh, this is uh, Dr. Morton uh, recording a second video uh, for the uh, 18th of November, and this one is uh, SM Charts. And uh, the reason I'm doing that, I just really wanted to get this covered, and actually this will be the last video uh, that we'll do uh, that uh, presents any new information. We've already actually covered Unit 20 when I did Unit 17. Uh, so. Uh, so basically, we've covered the whole book now, when, or at least we will have after this lecture. This lecture will be fairly short, and uh, I'm going to let you watch it uh, also on the 18th with the uh, Unit 18, the one that I recorded. Now remember, no material on Unit 18 will be on the test. Uh, so uh, I, I don't think I'll ask you anything at all about that. Uh, I do want you to, to look at it. I want you to just, you know, sort of see... Uh, maybe the only thing that might be on there, I might ask you if uh, in a typical design we like to separate the control path from the data path. That might be the only the only thing I'll ask about. And that's and I'd already covered that before anyway. So so I want you just to to look at 18, sort of you know see if you can kind of understand the concept uh, of how they you know of how they did the multiplier, how they did the adder. Uh, if you get that much, I'm perfectly happy. But this material will be on the test. I will give you uh, a couple of maybe even maybe as many as three problems that require the use of uh, of uh, SM charts, uh, or maybe a good handful of questions. So make sure you understand this. This material you need to, to grasp. It's not complicated. It's very similar to the to the state graph that you've already been doing, but the difference is that rather than having having to do the state graph and then extract that information onto a state table and then substitute in the flip-flop assignment and then have a transition table and then take that off and put it in k-maps and then take the equations off the k-maps and then build your build your circuit and test it and uh, have your full implementation you can do it all straight from the sm chart and that's quite a bit of savings uh, so you'll see that it's fairly straightforward uh, and uh, hopefully it'll make a lot of sense. The other thing that's nice is it's very easy to do a combination, uh, have both Mealy outputs and more outputs associated uh, with an SM chart, which is probably closer to reality. Uh, in reality, many state machines will have uh, some of the outputs associated with the states, as in a more, but then some may be actually associated with the links. Uh, and so for that reason, an SM chart's also a little nicer. So I think this is, this is a tool you'll find that you'll probably continue to use uh, in your career uh, doing uh, digital design. Uh, and in fact, uh, even doing uh, microprocessors and embedded uh, controller design, and embedded systems, uh, most of the time you'd be better off to actually have a state machine. So this is really vital information um, and uh, one of the things I'm going to try and do in the Micro One course is uh, is push more and more to uh, to implementing uh, at least one or two of the labs with a state machine. I haven't ever done that, but I think that is really important, and uh, I'm going to try and uh, uh, implement that in the very near future. So you you may see that when you take it, um, hopefully soon. All right. <coughs> All right. So. Uh, <sighs> Sorry. So SM charts. Another name for so these are uh, for a se sequential circuit is a state machine. So you've heard this. We've already talked about it. And you can use uh, state graphs to describe its behavior, but you can also use a state machine chart. An SM chart. Or uh, there's another. There are other names for these as well. Okay. Um, let's see if I can. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's. A little easier, I think, to understand a state graph than it is a sometimes a, um, uh, or, uh, sorry, and, uh, uh, sometimes it's easier to, to comprehend the SM chart than it is a state graph, uh, and you can convert these into different forms, which actually is nice because it, it, it can let you think about uh, a number of sort of different uh, ways to visualize your your um, uh, your system. The, it's kind of like a flow chart, but it, it's not a flow chart, uh, but it does follow some strict rules. There are three principal components. And uh, so every SM chart is made up of blocks. 
and you might have, uh, if you have five states, you'll have five blocks. If you have 10 states, you'll have 10 blocks and so forth. Each block always has at least one state box. And it may have a decision box and it may have conditional output boxes. And those are the three elements. So a block is made up. So there's always a one block per state. And there's a block that's made up of three types of boxes. A state box, which is square. A diamond box, which is a decision box. And an oval type rectangular box with curved corner with uh, yeah curved corners and we call that a conditional output box this box represents mealy outputs this box represents the impact of your inputs and this box defines your state and any more outputs are also included in this box also included in this box is your flip is your flip-flop assignment for encoding your state now uh, we there is uh, the only required box is the state box. The other boxes uh, are optional, so you may or may not have them. Uh, if there's no input, you wouldn't have decision boxes. If there's no melee outputs, you wouldn't have conditional output boxes. There is only one entrance into any block, and that entrance goes straight into the state box. Then there are paths that uh, there's a path that comes out of the state box, and if it goes into the decision box, then it can split into other paths, and you can have more than one decision box if you have more than one input. Um, this path through your block is called a link path, and you can have several link, packs, link paths active at the same time as long as they only they all exit at the same pro, at the same point. You can't have two different exit points active at the same time. That's not allowed. And you can have multiple different exit points, uh, depending on what the what what your uh, state machine is doing and what it's like and how you put it together. Um, all right. So here's here the, here's another way of looking at these principal components. The state box normally has the state name and then an output list. And on top of it, we'll have the state encoding, the state flip-flop encoding. So if you have, say, three flip-flops, A, B, C, then you would have you would have the A, B, C encoding. For instance, for the for the state S0, you might encode it 0, 0, 0. For A is 0, B is 0, and C is 0, and various other things. So, so that's how the state box looks. The decision box, which is optional, but, it, it, but it's usually conditioned on an input. You usually put the input variable in the box, like Z, uh, sorry, like uh, um, like X. So X is your input, you put X in the box. If X is one, you're gonna take the true branch this way. If X is zero, you're gonna take the false branch this way. Now you can switch those. You can have one on the, what, this side and zero on that side. Or you can have one coming out the bottom and one coming out the side. But normally, there's only one variable in this box, and you only get the choice of 0 or 1, since that's what we're limited to. Now, the conditional output box is just positioned along one of these link paths. And it can be before the, the a decision box, or it can be after a decision box. Or you can have several inputs, and you can have a decision box, and then the link paths, and then other decision blocks, and other link and, and, and other conditional output boxes. All right, and normally the way we do these conditional output boxes is we only put in the conditional output box when our output variable is going to be one. So if we put, say, a Z in there, or say a Z, Z1, uh, Z2, Z3, we put, say, Z1 in there, then that means Z1 is one on that link path. Whenever, the, whenever you've taken that link path, Z is going to be one, or ZA is going to be one, but on any in any other link path or in any other uh, uh, block, then then Z A would be zero unless there is a conditional output list which also has Z A. So we normally don't write in there Z A equals one or Z A equals zero. We only we just write Z A, and you understand that if it, if the variable appears, it's one. If the variable does not appear, it's zero. 
and that's that just keeps these nice and simple and much easier to read all right so here's an example of a state block one block one state and uh, you can have some number of exit paths at the bottom but only one entrance path at the top and it enters into the state box now here this is state s1 and we have more outputs z1 and z2 now we also have an, in, an input x1 and x2 and x3 so we have three inputs and those three inputs then uh, are evaluated in the order of x1 first and then depending on which path you take we look at x2 and x3 if we if x1 is a 0 then we don't care about x3 if x1 is a 1 then we don't care about x2 and that actually works out really well uh, so x2 could be whatever you want it becomes a don't care if x1 is a 1 and so we first test x1 and then we go this way if it's true if it's 1 and then we test x3 and we go this way if it's a zero or false and as we go out of the block we go through the conditional output box which has z5 in it which means that z5 equals one if we take that path now if we take this path then we wouldn't be taking these other paths and therefore z3 and z4 would be considered to be zero but z1 and z2 would be ones because they're associated with the state box so there are always one as long as you're in this state. All right. You can also make these things in several different topologies. You can have one where you're lo looking at it as sort of in a parallel mode or in a serial mode. And these, when I first saw this, I thought these can't possibly be the same. This makes no sense at all. Well, the reason they can be the same is because multiple link paths on this parallel model, as long as they exit through the same point, can be active at the same time. Um, now, if you have multiple exit points, then then you you cannot have multiple exit points. All uh, you can't have more than one of them ever active at the same time. In this model, uh, so let's say z let's say x1 is true, x2 is false, x3 is true. So how would that path look over here? So so x1 is what did I say? x1 true, x2 false, x3 true. So let's say the one is going out the, the, the left and the zero goes out the bottom. So this was true. So now we're going to go out and go through the conditional output box. Then we're going to go into X2. It was false. We're just going to drop straight through. And now we're in X3. It was true. We're going to drop through the Z2. So, so we have Z4. Well, we have Z1 because it's in the state box. It's, so Z1 equals 1. Z4 equals 1. Z3 equals 0 because we didn't go through this 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 variable this conditional output and z2 equals 1 and our variables are x1 is 1 x2 is 0 and x3 is 1 those are the inputs and so that's the path we take we go come here down over down through here straight down over around and down whereas here x1 is true so we go this way that path's active x2 is false, so we just go straight through, and x3 is true, so we go through z2. All three of those paths are active at the same time, but they all exit from the same point, so that's legal. It's only legal if they exit the same point. All right, and then same thing here. z4 is a 1, z3 is a 0 because we didn't take that path, z2 is a 1, and z1 is a 1. All right, here is a state graph hopefully you've we, you've seen a few of these already and so this makes some sense to you so in the top looking at the state graph what do you see well you see you have three nodes s uh, 0 s1 s2 and you have a melee output here which is z1 you have a melee output here which is z2 and uh, then you have some connections here that don't have melee outputs so on these outputs, of course, the only place where Z1 is going to be 1 is when you take this path from S2 to S0 on a 0. You have one input X, or whatever it's called. X, I guess, because it's X down here. Down here, you have you have three nodes, three blocks, uh, state S0, state S1, and state S2. You have each block has its state box. Each, each uh 
block has only one input. They're coming in on the sides, or well, these two on the side, this one on the top. Notice when you have uh, here state S0, say you're in S0 and you get a 0, you go out and you go up and back in the one input. You're not allowed to uh, have this internal path. You, you must exit the block and re-enter at the, at the one re-entry point. And that's one of the other rules. Okay, and, uh, and again, only Z1 is only one here. Z2 is only one here. And then these Z, C, B, and A, they're associated with the state. So the Z, A, B, and C are more outputs, as noted here, and Z1 and 2 are melee outputs. We only write the variable where the output is a 1. So everywhere else, except for this one, uh, one state, Z1 would be 0. But here it is a 1. OK. Now, uh, you can do, remember we looked at the binary multiplier. And uh, we saw we had our controller. And, and then we, we tried to shrink our controller down. And instead of all the states, we used this k thing. And we counted to 4. And we did it 4 times until k is 1. When k is 1, then we exit out and go to uh, S3. We go here on k m not. Uh, and output a shift, uh, and here we go. Uh, we we go uh, on when the multiplier digits are one. We add. We output the add, and we go to S two. And then if k is a one, we shift and go to S three. Otherwise, if k is not a one, we shift and we go back to S one, and we keep doing this. Um, and we either uh, we either stay here on a zero. Or we uh, add and shift and get back to here. But when k finally is 1, whether we're in S1, we go here, or, or we go this way, depending. And m has to be a 0 for us to go this way. m has to be a 1 for us to go this way. OK, so that's great. And, uh, and so that's, that's, that's uh, our state graph. But now if we do an SM chart on this, let's look at it. And there's our SM chart. Now, uh, here, since we have four states, we're going to have four blocks. This is our first one. Now, we didn't draw lines around these blocks, but there's S0, there's S1, there's S2, and here's S3. Notice S3 doesn't have anything in it at all except a state box. Okay, so let's look at this SM chart a little bit. So first off, or well, let's look at the block diagram. So we have two inputs, start and the multiplier bit, and then we also have this counter K thing. Well, so we have three inputs, I guess, really. And then we have some outputs. We have done, load, add, and shift. Now you remember that we either add and shift or shift depending on whether the multiplier bit is a 1. If it's a 0, then we don't have to add anything. We just shift. If it's a 1, then we have to add the, the add in in. And, and then we, uh, or sorry, we have to add the multiple can in and uh, to, to the partial product that we're building up. And then we uh, shift. Uh, and then when k finally adds, it counts up to 4, then that uh, shuts down the adding and shifting, and we uh, issue the done command. And then we wait for the next start command, and we do it again. All right. So notice here. So what are our more outputs? Well, so we have uh, none in S0, none in S1. In S2, we have shift. And in S3, we have done. And where are our variables? Well, we have start. So we, we uh, as long as start is a 0, we stay in S0. We go back into S0. When start becomes a 1, we go down to S1, and we issue the load command. So that's our that's our melee output there. And then uh, in S1, we check the multiplier digit. If it's a 1, we add and go to S2. And in S2, we shift. And then we check K. If K is a 1, then we go to S3. If K is a 0, which means we ha haven't done it four times yet, then we go back and, and do it again. Um, 
Now this this violet this chart should really have these uh, these three entrance arrows should really all point to the same place. It's not that big of a deal uh, because but you just have to make sure that you 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 need it, it's it's really good for them to keep them going in the same place because you'll see in a minute when we actually use these to write our equations we need we need to account for all paths into s so one of the, some of these nodes and if you have them coming in at different points you might you might miss a path i guess that's really the only point otherwise it doesn't really matter okay and then if the multiplier digits are zero then we shift we check k if we've counted four times we get we issue done we go to s3 and issue done and then we go back test zero if k isn't three then we get then k is a zero and we go back and we do do this again all right and uh let's see we should oh yeah and we and we will, will have already issued the shift command we sh issue the shift command before we check k all right now so state machine charts can also be called algorithmic state machine charts or ASM. I I, I always use the term uh, SM chart. So, uh, and then uh, yeah, okay. So th I, that's kind of a repeat slide. I don't know how we got out of order. Uh, so how do you how do you write these? Well, basically, you assign all the states. Uh, you assign all the state boxes and the flip flop encoding scheme. Sorry. You, you make sure you assign the flip-flop encoding scheme to, to each state box. And then you, uh, you identify all states in, in, in which, okay, so, yeah, okay. This is how you, how you write the equations for your flip-flops. It's easier, this is confusing, I'm just going to, we're just going to do the problem. Okay, so if you look at this, what you'll see uh, is that we have uh, three states, and we have encoded it with two flip-flops, and we'll call the flip-flops A and B. All right, and I'm gonna use a little pointer option here. Okay, now, so here in this state, and so we label these A and B. So this, this is the A, and then this is the B. Like that. So A is zero and B is zero, and that means we're in state S0. If A is 0 and B is 1, we're in S1. And if they're both 1, we number these a little bit out of order, then A is 1 and B is 1. Now, when we want to write the equation for flip-flop input A, all we do is we pick every state where A is a 1. Well, where what is A here? A is a 0. Okay, so we don't use that state. What's A here? It's a 0. We don't use that one. What's A here? It is a 1. So now we let the D sub A, or the input to the A flip-flop, the D input to the A flip-flop, we make D sub A equal to all the paths into this node. Well, what are the paths into this node? There's a path from state S1, when X is a 1, we go in here, and there's a path from state S2 back into itself, when x is a 1, and we go back and around like this. So now we write that, we write, so what is state S1? Well, state S1 is simply A prime B. That's its flip-flop encoding. And since we go into S2 only when x is a 1, so that would be A prime B x. So we write that down. A prime, uh, where, uh, let's see, uh, this is A. A prime B x. And then here, we're we're in state S2, which is A, B, and we have to have X has to be a 1. So that's A, B, X. So now our equation for the uh, A flip-flop input, the D sub A, or the A plus, if you want to call it that, is A prime B, X plus A, B, X. And you can combine that to just B, X. All right. Now, what about for uh, the B input, the D sub B, the input to the B flip-flop. The D sub B or B plus, whichever you want to call it, is going to be equal to all the nodes where B is a 1. Well, up here in node S0, B is a 0. But in, no, but in node S1, uh, B is a 1, even though A is a 0. And then down here in S2, 
uh, B and A are both ones. So, uh, so we have to account for the two paths that we already accounted for down here in S2. So we can just write A prime BX plus ABX plus, and now how many paths do we have in the state S1? We only have one path in the state S1. It comes from state S0. State S0 is coded A prime B prime, and it came in from when X is equal to 1. So that's A prime B prime X. So now we take, here's our B equation right here. And we have A prime B prime X plus A prime BX. That's, that's, that's this node. And then plus ABX. And that's this pathway here going in there. And so, and you can s simplify that to BX. Uh, and since it simplifies to BX, uh, then you just have uh, A prime B prime X plus BX. And then you can actually drop the B prime from that term and you wind up with A prime X plus BX. All right. So that's that's uh, that's how you solve for the D flip flop inputs. Notice no state table, no transition table. You do have to do the flip flop state encoding, but you don't have to substitute and make a transition table. You don't have to do K maps, and you already and you're done. Now what about what about the outputs? Well, so the more outputs are easy. They're just associated with the state. So Z A is just going to be A prime B prime. Z B is just going to be A prime B. ZC is just going to be AB. And what about the more outputs? Well, there's two of them, Z1 and Z2. And Z1 is just associated with this state. So that would be ABX prime. And this one over here, X2, would be ABX. Because X has to be a 1 to go, to go down through that conditional output box. All right. So hopefully you see that it's pretty easy. Uh, your, your more outputs are super easy, and your uh, uh, mealy outputs are pretty easy, too. All right. So uh, with that, I think I'll erase the ink on the slide. Uh, and we'll go to the next slide. And you can see there's where the uh, B equals 1. That gives us the B equation. And A equals 1, only there. That gives us the A equation. Uh, okay. So, okay, and I think that pretty much covers it. So I'm going to work some other, um, I'm going to work some other uh, FM, FM charts, um, uh, some other SM charts uh, as we go along. In, in the review for the final. So from here on out, all we're going to do is review for the final exam. And so I'm going to stop this recording then and add it to the one before.